that. If you ask me to run a cohort based course like today, I will be like, okay, but uh, I don't know people. So first let me post a lot of content and build some thought leadership so that I have like 10,000 LinkedIn followers, an email list of 1,000 people. And out of those 1,000 people, when I announce my course, then uh, maybe 100 people will show some interest. And out of those 100 people, maybe 10 will purchase the course. Is that now not how things work in your worldview? Maybe. I mean, th that sounds like a plan. I, I think it depends. It depends what you're trying to solve for. So if you already have an audience, then what you're trying to solve for is what is the the content, the course, the group coaching program? Like, what is the product that I can build that the people in this audience are going to want to pay for? So that's a different question than if I don't have an audience, uh, but maybe I'm confident in the, the content because I've already worked with people one-on-one. -on -one. I know that it works. So I'm, I'm trying to solve for a different problem. So the, the gap that I have is how do I get, how do I go from like not having a big audience to people buying what I'm, what I'm selling. And the, the, that's what I did. And that's the, the path that I teach most often, because I think it's easier to get someone to pay you than it is to become a celebrity. So the, in, in that path, what I always recommend is you start by just talking to it. It's, it's like a very basic, like starting a business from scratch advice. Like you start by having a very rough idea of what your thing can be or, or like starting with a rough idea of who you're really trying to help, like who your ideal customer is. And then you talk to five of those people and you talk to five of those people very broad strokes, like it's not a sales call, it's just an interview, just to get a sense of it is do is the problem that I'm solving that I assume these people have, am I right about that? Do they really bring that up on their own? Is this really something that they need help with? And that's all that conversation can be. But now you've had five conversations and maybe four of those people might be interested in what you're building. So you have like, four people in your bank of potential customers now. And then you go to the next stage where you're like, okay, I think these four people might be interested in what I'm doing. So maybe they just told you they were interested, but you didn't have anything for them to like actually show what their interest is. But maybe you're like, okay, I have a better idea of what I'm doing. The way they described their problem was really clear. So I know what it is. So how can I launch like a very low stakes beta for those people. How you structure your beta depends on, on, again, what you're testing. Are you testing the content? Are you testing whether people are interested in paying for it? And it also depends on like the type of community business you're building. Are you building towards like a group coaching thing? Are you building towards a course? Are you building towards a membership community? So depending on which of those you're doing, who your members are, what their problems are, and like the thing you're trying to solve for, then you like create a very low stakes beta for those people. So it could be hosting like a one-off workshop that is has like some kind of minimum that people are paying for. They have to pay something for it, um, but it's very cheap and seeing how people show up and then testing the content that way. And then from there, then you can like start the whole cycle and you can get testimonials from the people who showed up. Those people are now more invested in what you're doing. Hopefully you help them solve that problem in a small way. And now you can like build it up one more level. So now like maybe when you promoted those, uh, the, the workshop, instead of just the four people who were interested, you were able to like get it, get eight people to show up. So now you have eight people in your bank of people who can help you with the next phase of what you're doing. And then in the next phase, maybe you host a workshop again and you improve it a little bit and maybe it's 15 people. So now you have 15 people in your bank. And then once you like launch the official thing, you built, it's it's not just about like, I have 15 people on this list. It's like, I know 15 people. These are people who I've built a relationship with and it becomes a much more honest 
sales conversation because you're real, you're actually building this with the people. You're not just like pretending to like be going through some kind of process, but what you actually want is to like extract value from them. You're actually building the thing that you're building with the people who are interested in potentially being your customer down the line. And then it's like a snowball. Like it just kind of adds like each phase you can like take a little bit more risk because You have more and more people in your bank of people who you can count on to refer people to you, join the thing and give you money or whatever it is. Um, 